Aloha and welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Body and Soul Wisdom podcast. Let me just do a sound check really quick. Aloha and okay. welcome everybody. We're working. Welcome back. I don't know why Facebook says it's not working, but I am back with you again today on this lovely full moon, full harvest moon with a beautiful guest. And we are going to bring her on. Let me just see. Here we go. You're going to come up in just a minute, Jen. Jennifer, Jennifer coming to us from the lovely Scottsdale, Arizona. And I'm really excited today to have a conversation around healing multidimensionally. Many of you who have been listening to my podcast over the last four and a half years know that I love to talk anything and everything energy. I was listed as number nine on podcasts around energy medicine. I like to dive into the aspects of health and well being, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. And Jennifer is a guest expert here today to bridge the gap between spiritual energy, physical, with her experience as a nurse practitioner and also an astrologist and helping us to understand that healing isn't just physical. It is very much spiritual and energetic, and it begins with small, simple daily practices. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for being here today. How are you today? Oh, thanks so much for having me, Jen. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. You know, just, I just love the way the universe brought us together at just the perfect time for both of us. It's been a big year of transition. And I think so many of us are calling in new community and oh, 100%. I feel so blessed that you are now a part of mine. Oh, I'm so grateful too. And you know, it's it's interesting. So we met in Arizona. Arizona is a very, very special place for me personally, just for my listeners. It's the place of my birth in Tucson, Arizona, 46 years ago, and also the place of my rebirth almost 18 years ago when I had a near-death experience with the birth of my oldest daughter. So in my 46 years, only living there for a total of three years, it's just such a magical place to me. The earth, it just, it holds me when I'm there. So um, I love that we share that connection. It's a, it's a very special place. And I'm, I'm super honored to have you as a guest on the show today and to share the work that you do in the world. So tell us a little bit about your background in um, both medicine and, and energy healing and how you got into that. Yeah. You know, my path has never been a straight one. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was in my 20s, so I, I started out my first career, I was a singer and I was in my 20s and my health crashed. So like so many people, I came into something new through a health crisis and I started getting the Western medicine told me there was nothing they could do for me. I was just going to have to live with it. And as a 26 year old, I was like uh, or 25. I was like, no, that's that's not sustainable. And I started seeking other other pathways. So nutrition. I was a junk food junkie at the time, completely changed the way that I ate, got energy healing work. Um, I was already getting massage at the time. I was trading massage and voice lessons with somebody um, mm. and realized how important that was. Um, and then, and then I started, I, I had a very colicky daughter. My first daughter was like this pinnacle of like, she just was the easiest baby. Then my second daughter came and she was a real challenge. Like she we joke around soul wise. She was really upset that she wanted to be a baby, but she was ready to be 35. I mean, she's 21 now and she's still ready to be 35, but she was colicky. She cried all the time. She'd barely sleep for two hours. She wanted to nurse all the time. I knew nothing about, you know, gut flora and probiotics or any of these things that we are so literate about now. And so I started studying to become a traditional naturopath. Cause I, I was living in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. And I said, I've got to be able to help my daughter. And so I started that down that pathway. And, uh, then I blew out a vocal cord and it was like, the universe was saying, Hey, look, we know you like to sing, but we want you to go this way. And that was right before within two months of me graduating from naturopathic college, so I said, okay, I guess, you know, I can be a little stubborn. So now universe, I hear you. <laughs> and, and also at that point I had three young children I had three children in four years. I don't even know how that happened. And, um, I was, I knew that with every child that was being, that came to me with every pregnancy, I became more intuitive. 
more psychic. I could feel things. I could sense things. I could see things. There was a little bit of um, clairvoyance that would come in. I could almost predict things. And I would crack up with my daughter, my oldest daughter, because she'd go, mommy, your phone's ringing. And I'd say, no, it's not. And literally two minutes later, it would ring. So we were, I was seeing these little, these glimpses of intuition and sensibilities in my children as well. But California changed their licensing laws right after I moved. So I was in Pennsylvania. I had all my kids in Pennsylvania, moved back to California where I'd grown up and California had changed their licensing laws around naturopathy. So I had to go to nursing school. I was like, I have to have letters after my name. No one's going to believe me. And I did want, I still want to become a nurse practitioner. I'm actually not yet a nurse practitioner. It's like on my radar and I'll have to come back in a year or two when I'm then again, a nurse practitioner, but I went back to nursing school. I decided to go back to nursing school as opposed to going to acupuncture school, chiropractic college, med school. I said, if I go back to med school now, I'm going to be, you know, do all my prereqs and everything. I'll be 50 by the time I'm finally back in practice. And I really want to be able to help people. At that point, I'd become Reiki certified um, early on. I had realized how important energy is for our healing, how important nutrition, lifestyle, our attitude, everything, all of these different practices are to our day-to-day health. I learned about herbs and homeopathy supplements, and I was so hungry to help people. So I said, okay, got to go back to school, became a nurse. Um, That was 11 years ago. And so for the last 11 years, I've really been wanting to, my, my goal is to really be a bridge for people so that we understand, yes, Western medicine has its place. Conventional medicine is really important, especially in acute emergency situations, trauma, you know, acute injury, like, like when we're in a place of extreme physical danger or loss or imbalance, Western medicine can be really helpful, but it's only one piece of the pie, only one piece of the puzzle. And nature also then offers us, as you know, as an integrative health coach and all the work that you've done over the years, nature offers us so much medicine and not only mother earth, but also you could say the cosmos and the stars and God, source, creator, spirit, the divine angels, whatever, whatever you call this omnipotent energy that of love that exists all around us. I think most people would say that we don't just have a physical body, we have a soul or a spirit. Otherwise, we'd just be zombies walking around. We have our individual something, our essence. And this can get out of balance too. And so really over the last few years, you know, I definitely, I was working at the VA when COVID hit. And it was devastating because we weren't allowed to talk about prevention. We weren't allowed to talk about daily health practices. And that was the office I worked in. I worked in the office of patient centered care and cultural transformation, which is a really long way of saying we wanted to integrate a more whole health model into VA practice. And so I got to travel the country teaching people in the VA how to do this. So when COVID came, we were put in a little box and told not to not like, just you go over there and just wait. And there was only one form of prevention that we were allowed to talk about. And so I ended up leaving the VA and I was really burned out with healthcare. And I started diving into the astrological piece, doing readings for people and really getting a much better idea of how our natal chart, our natal blueprint absolutely informs who we are in this life. Now it's a blueprint. So it doesn't mean that you have to have blue wallpaper in the living room. It's not, you know, like when you create an architect creates a house It's the framework. So our natal blueprint, our divine natal blueprint is also our framework, but can be expressed infinite ways. But the thing that I love so much about it too, is that it it takes away any blame or shame about who we might be and what we might experience in this life. And it also validates a lot of our feelings like, oh, I've always been called to write a book. I've always been called to travel or to do this. And our world is really good at shutting us down through fear, 
and limiting beliefs. But our divine natal blueprint says, no, I no pun intended, but sky's the limit with who we are and how we express ourselves. So very, very uh, fun, adventurous, wild pathway I've been on in this life to really get to this point where I can now see how all those experiences inform how I get to work with people on their own journey of finding what their optimal physical, spiritual health might look like for them and how to really live their best life. Cause I just, I, I just don't believe we're meant to suffer. And if we do, it becomes whatever we've experienced becomes our superpower. So it's, it's like, we're here to really enjoy life and thrive, but how we get there is another story. <laughs> you were so speaking my language when you talk about, well, a couple of different things. I'm going to, I'm going to bring my listeners in for a moment who've been listening to me for a long time and sort of the topics that I've covered that are very similar to this so that they can sort of integrate where our conversation is going today. Um, I too believe that we're not meant, we're not born to suffer. Suffering is a choice. And I realize that that might not land correctly for some people, but that more so in the choice that it can become our superpower. And I know that um, that has definitely been a story in my lifetime, which is why I do the work that I do, because I have had the courage to ov overcome and to rise above and to continue, you know, in my words, resonating back to that divine needle blueprint that I was born into. And um, I've always called it in my own words, your embodied soul signature or your, your soul blueprint. Those are the words that I've used over the past four and a half years on the podcast. Um, and, you know, I was just thinking as you were, as you were talking, the very first thing I said on this show today, for whatever reason, intuitively was guided to say was just the simple awareness of where we met which was Arizona. And then I went on to say I was born in Arizona. And so that was also my rebirth. And so was my daughter. And what I want to share with the audience who's listened to me over the years is this is why I love this so much because Jennifer and I both, Jennifer and Jennifer, <laughs> and the frequency of the name is important, um, but we both like to bridge science and spirit together in our own ways. And my listeners know I am a former mechanical engineer, but also trained in celestial navigation because I went to the Merchant Marine Academy. And so when I learned celestial navigation, I learned the sort of the opposite of astrology that we could use stars in the sky to find our position in the middle of the ocean within two nautical miles. And this is before cell phones or any GPS or anything. I'm talking about the 90s. And I could do that through a three major math problem. And I was fascinated. So if I could do that, then I know that my birthplace meant that the stars were aligned in a certain way at a certain time. If, if, the, if the stars up here equal this point on earth, then this point on earth at this time also equals whatever's happening in the cosmos. So for, so for my really, you know, I guess nerdy people out there like us, I hope that this invites you to soften a little bit around the piece of just creating space to bridge that gap between science and spirit. This is just one way that I know from my experience to bring them together. Um, the way that both Jennifer and I have, have done it is, is also through physical health. And my listeners know that I have shared many times the first health crisis that I had, which was, which will be 18 years ago, which was in 2006 which, and, and my listeners know, I talk about it as a soul upgrade. Like I was living a very low vibration life, completely out of alignment with my soul purpose. My daughter's energy was very high vibration. She couldn't come in really through the portal, through the uterus into this earth at the vibration I was resonating at. And my body shut down. I had liver failure. My body shut down. I had a health crisis. And from that point on, that was my soul upgrade. I began to alter course to then come back to my divine natal blueprint, which is our soul frequency. It's what, it's what we're here to do. And then 
in 2014, so eight years later, I had a second health crisis, which was very energetic. And I want to dive into, I'm not going to go into that story. My listeners know that story. I want to tie together the value of what you're bringing to this conversation. And I'm doing it through my personal experience because my listeners know about that second health crisis that was energetic. It was the, just to recap, my dad was going in for open heart surgery and I started to display all the symptoms that he was having and ended up in the emergency room that night as well. And part of what I experienced was a thyroid storm, which suppression of the voice and speaking my truth, which is interesting to me that you were a singer and it may have been part of your, your soul journey as well. And that I remember that voice, Claire, audiently saying to me, you can eat as healthy as you want, because I was at the peak of physical health at that time. But if you don't heal your spirit, it doesn't matter. And I clearly heard that voice on January 24th, 2014, and began to alter my life again to yoga, breath work, energy healing, life coaching, and moving away from just, you know, medicine, which is kind of how your path went. Like, so here you are in Western medicine, realizing that there's a deeper layer to healing. So I want to ask you, and I'm going to talk specifically to women right now, because we're women, I support women. Chances are that if somebody's listening to this show, they, in some capacity, if they're not a woman, they have a woman in their life that they support and love. And so this can be super helpful. What are the patterns that you're seeing energetically in women that are manifesting as physical symptoms because there it there seems to be these heavy frequencies that override and that we're seeing uh you know like we'll see kind of a quote epidemic of something what have you seen over say the last 10 or 20 years that you've been doing this work as it relates to women what are the over writing themes how are they manifesting physically, because the theme underneath isn't something that we're aware of, but the symptoms we are aware of. And what are you seeing? What have you seen? Well, well, I just have to say, I just hearing your story, you know, the the lost art of navigating through the stars. Um, (laughs) Wow. I I just had chills as you were telling that story. I have a sextant from 1942. Oh, and that's how, that's how we navigated until GPS, right? So there's, it's so fascinating too, that you experienced something with your uterus, second chakra Mm -hmm. and your voice, fifth chakra, because they're so connected. And so to answer your question, and and I want to, I want to preface this with, I, there are very few rigid beliefs that I have. But one rigid belief that I have is that every healing and health crisis is a potential for a spiritual upgrade. So whatever you might be suffering from physically right now, know that it is in your best interest and something magical is going to come out of it. You might not know it yet. You might just have to surrender to it and be like, all right, God, bring it, whatever. Okay. I get to, you, you drive. So can I uh, pause for a moment? Yeah. I think the word that's super important to take away from this is the surrendering to it. Yeah. And I know you recently had your own moment in this as well. I did. I think that's super, super important. And in both, both of my soul upgrade, spiritual upgrade experiences, it was in those moments of surrender that everything shifted. And I I just want to pause for a moment because that's so important. And maybe not everybody is experiencing the physical health crisis. It could be a marriage crisis. It could be a financial crisis. Somewhere it's landing in your body. So whether you know it or not, there's an imprint it's trying to make. And you get to shift that from the inside out back to the divine natal blueprint. I just wanted to pause in that surrender because what a lot of us do is we, we move into fixer. We move into rescuer, whether we're (laughs) healers or not, or, and I like, we, I, we can, we overdo everything. And there is a point where like spirit said to me, you can eat as healthy as you want. And I was eating so healthy. No way could I have a second health crisis. Like I truly believed whole foods heals and it does. It did. And that's not all of who I was. 
Right. So I just wanted to pause around the surrender part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is huge. I mean, I, w- I will use myself as, as an example. So back in the beginning of July, I lost my voice. I took my son to call my, we, I went to new student orientation at in Indiana Bloomington, where my son was going to college. And, uh, you know, he gave me his cold, but you know, so much more than that. So I, I lost my voice for two weeks. And just as I was getting my voice back, I ended up in the emergency room hemorrhaging through my uterus. So that was a uterine voice (laughs) connection. You cannot deny it. I was in the middle of a breakup that learning to use your voice, learning, trying to, right. Trying to use my voice. (laughs) <laughs> in a new way. In a, right. Exactly. And so, and I laugh now because I was also given that choice by the divine. Do you want to go? Do you want to go and get ready for your next life? Or do you want to stay here? And I was like, how is that even a choice? Of course I'm staying here. I'm a single mom to three kids. They need me. You know, they're all young adults, but still. And I felt like I was on this precipice of something so new that had to be expressed. So obviously I stayed, but these are the two areas. Well, the two main areas where I'm seeing things are in the, in the uterus, in the reproductive area, all across the ages, even in women who are menopausal or have, have been having issues with their uterus over the last couple of years. And that goes back to so it's like, it's our most vulnerable place as a woman, I think, where we have been, women across millennia have been manipulated, dominated, et cetera, through our reproductive system. And then our voice is suppressed over the years. And, and I say this as someone who believes in reincarnation. So I was probably one of those patriarchal men who was suppressing women. I own that. And then in between our voice and our uterus, right? We have our heart and we have our gut, our solar plexus, which is a whole nervous system on its own from a physiological perspective, but it's also a gateway to major awakening, major up-leveling. And of course our heart, one of the things that I preach for lack of a better word that I teach is that the more we can get out of, and I say this as a smart woman, right? My intellect has gotten me very far in my life, but the more we can get out of this place into, out of our brains, into our heads, into our hearts and make decisions, feel, think from our heart also. So there's just this whole, like, I I feel like there is this connection and of course the root, but really so much between our reproductive systems and our voice and this whole area in between. This is where for 90% of the women that I work with, it's showing up. Mm -hmm. There are, there are outliers where for other people, it manifests differently, Mm -hmm. but this is where It's in these places where I'm seeing it physically manifest thyroid issues, Mm -hmm. very prevalent right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially Hashimoto's, which is suppressed, suppressed voice, suppressed expression, suppressed thyroid. Yes. And Hashimoto's in women who are having hyperthyroid storms because the thyroid is one of, is one of the organs that is the canary in the coal mine. It will, it's so, it loves us just like our uterus. It loves us so much that it will sacrifice itself for say the heart because the heart is impacted by thyroid one way or the right? hyper or hypo, the heart can right. be, be impacted. So we can't live without our heart, but we do have drugs and whatever to help us. If we, for whatever reason, the thyroid has to come out, like it'll sacrifice itself for our survival. Hmm. I 100% agree. It's why my colors are orange and turquoise. That is the throat chakra and the sacral chakra. And I see, so I'm a person who sees energy and color. And so I see, I see this and, and then I love how you said it affects the solar plexus. And so So yes, there's an, I mean, thyroid suppression is on the rise, infertility. And then there's also 
symptoms of having your gallbladder removed, or in my case, it was liver failure, um, gut issues, heart issues. And so how do we, what do we need to do? Because you talked about the day-to-day practices. Maybe for people listening right now, their body's already starting to speak to them. Mm -hmm. I want to talk specifically to, and I'm thinking of a couple of people right now. There are people that are just like, I am eating so healthy. I exercise. I'm doing the inner work. I'm doing all these things. Why am I still suffering in some way? Why do I have, why am I tired? Why am I, do I have skin detoxing happening, happening hives, acne cysts? Why am I not able to get pregnant? Mm -hmm. Why is my cycle off? Why are these things happening when I eat well, I exercise, I've done the inner work. At what point, like what is the next step? What would you say to that woman who feels like they're doing all the things and they still haven't found that missing piece? What does she need to hear right now? So. I almost want to apologize for saying this, but the word that really comes to mind, to my heart is surrender that we come back to that surrender because this is where we go. Well, I'm doing everything Mm -hmm. to support my health. I'm doing the books. I'm studying. I'm, I'm doing the workshops. I've got my daily gratitude journal. I'm, you know, going to float therapy twice a week. I'm like, I'm doing all of these things. And my question becomes, where are you receiving? So this is such a beautiful question. And you just opened up so much because a few minutes ago, we talked about the uterus and how it's been suppressed and it's vulnerable. And you know that I teach prosperity. Prosperity is all sacral chakra. So this is, this is it right here. This is the chakra. This is the one that is when we can resource it energetically, naturally, it is also the chakra of pleasure, abundance, joy, creativity. It's where we create and birth. So tell me a little bit more about that. Can you expand on what are some of the ways that we can begin to shift? It's like, there's such an energy shift that we're being asked to step, step into, to really owning and, and we'll see it as like creating this sacred container around the sacral and the, almost like the vulnerability of it is also the beautiful part of it because it is the part that allows it to grow so naturally. Like you think of plants out in the wild, right? Like it's vulnerable to be a prickly pear cactus in a desert, you know? And yet life force finds a way to thrive naturally when it needs to in ways that it does when it surrenders to its environment but there's also a need for like healthy discernment. So can you kind of walk us through the energy, like how we can nurture and resource the energy around the sacral? Yeah. What a great question. And, you know, I believe, again, this is my own personal belief that our womb is what makes us women, W-O-M-B-E-N. We are women. And we, this is our, this is our sacred gift in this life to have this space now. And I say this, you know, I had a, I had a hysterectomy four weeks ago today because my uterus, my womb said, look, I'm holding you back. You can't ascend to where you need to go with all of this inflammation and all of this energy, because the reality is, and I'm just going to speak really truthfully here. After my divorce, I slept around a lot. I was looking for him, my savior, my rescuer. I was a single mom in school, very little income. I was like, I was, I was in this place of desperation and I was 
taking in seed that with or without a condom that wasn't that was bringing me down i was not in a place of sacred receiving and so that's i think a big part of it for us as women unless we are the select few who marry our high school sweetheart it's magic from the beginning you're in there forever this is one of the things i think the shame that we feel around sexuality can be released that's one way that we can and i'm not i don't advocate obviously for women to go out and get a hysterectomy unless that is the right thing for you but to release that energy to release that shame that we might have around sensuality around how we spend money because that was the other thing is i would sort of binge spend money in a way that i was seeking something or looking for something outside of myself so you can to even just say okay i'm releasing all of that shame or guilt or whatever it might however it might resentment anger mm -hmm. that sacred rage that we might be feeling like how could i let myself like buyer's remorse in the morning where you go i just slept with that guy oh my god or I've been like, why can I not let go of this relationship? Or why can I not fully receive the gifts that my husband or partner wants to give to me? So I think to, to start with the release and then to immediately receive love, immediate, re immediately receive light, immediately receive a new energy into that space. And that could be from seeking out a teacher like you or like me, or because we do need that support, but to let go of some of the doing mm -hmm. and allowing ourselves to be more and surrender more and to say, okay, God, angels, guides, again, however that energy resonates with you, what what do you want me to receive from you today? How do you want me to receive today? And that might be getting up with a sunrise. So you can go out and see Venus and Jupiter who are just stunning right now in the, in the sunrise sky, or, you know, just going to the beach where if depending on where you live or just having that, you know, cause it can come in myriad ways. Maybe it's just like, making yourself a cup of coffee, even though you're not mm. supposed to drink coffee because it's not good for you. Well, maybe that's just something that's going to nourish your soul right now without the judgment. And you just bless that little cup of coffee. Thank you, coffee, for honoring me today. I mean, well, it, it and you really... can add some adaptogens to it and some other things, <laughs> some MCT oil, and then you've got a superfood coffee. Yeah. Right. Some nutritional mushrooms. A hundred percent. If I, I'm not a coffee drinker, but if I do, it's got this much dirt in it at the bottom, which is my, I literally taste like dirt, but you know, a little bit of coffee. Exactly. But it, it is, again, it's those, it, it going back to the very beginning of this podcast. Yes. There are big things that we can do for ourselves, big leaps we can take, but how are we receiving in the day to day? Because when we get out of balance, that's so often when our spirit and soul start talking to us at first rather quietly and then rather loudly. Yes. And the reason we're having this conversation is because we hope to prevent, well, it's not really up to us. Everybody's on their own <laughs> journey, but maybe hearing this will help you to alter course before it gets really loud and leads to a, yeah. a breakdown. Yeah. Of course, every soul has their own journey. No one's to say what is right or wrong. It just is what it is. And maybe part of your journey is hearing this voice, this message, so that you can listen to your own body when it's yeah. whispering before it gets loud. Right. Um, and, you know, we just have to trust that people hear what they're ready to hear when they're ready to hear it. And one of the things that there's so much that you said, um, as a person who has done women's retreats for 10 years, one of the things that I have often done in many of my retreats is a shame circle mm. because shame on a frequency level is so heavy and it doesn't matter how you carry it. I think everybody carries it in some way. And um, there's so much around that, that I could just, God, there's so much energy in this right now. I mean, even if it's not 
sexual abuse. It could be abortion or it could be, you know, I know for me, and I, I've been married for 20 years. I was one of those people that married very, been with my husband since I was like 20 years old. And I feel really grateful for that, but I still carry shame, but in a different way as a, as a mother. And so that's mm. just where my line is. Right. And we're all here to really release that because it's such, it's the lowest, the lowest vibration, the lowest frequency. I, I believe on, on the David Hawkins mm-hmm. energy scale. I think so. And, and not everybody, ha- you don't have to have, you know, you, like I had the liver failure, you had a hysterectomy, like you don't, you don't have to have that to release that energy, but hopefully this conversation gives you permission to just create awareness and knowing that if you do subconsciously hold or suppress this, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. And that it's okay to find some support to release it. And that you can, you don't have to release it physically. You can release it energetically. You can release it through your voice. You can release mm-hmm. it through talk therapy. You can release it in so many different ways. I've done soul retrievals. I've done so many different, you know, methods of, of healing. And in my experience, the most transformational work has always been energy work. And Mm -hmm. it really takes a deep, really deep layer of trust to do the energy work, which is why I think it's so, I think it's so creates such a, a, a positive result is because you, you have to step into the frequency of trust because there's no tangible result. And so when you're in that frequency of trust, you're open to receiving. Mm-hmm. And when you open to receive you, and you surrender at that level as something that you may or may now some people can see energy, but most people probably can't. They have to really step into that, that frequency of trust. It just elevates you to a whole new level of healing and receiving. It's not looking at the, the lab results or the x-ray. Although what's so nice about what you do is you, you can bring those in to show people. And some people are going to really struggle with the results are going to look normal and they're not going to feel good. Right. That's probably, I know a lot of people I worked with. That's what, when you get to that level of really needing that deeper healing, it's all, it's all really energetic. It manifests as pain. It -hmm. manifests as suppression. It manifests as lots of gut issues. But the biggest takeaway that I heard that you say that you said around all of this to kind of wrap the bow around this is that what, you know, when we're doing, which we're so good at, we're not receiving. And so when we're doing, even if it's healing, I eat healthy, I exercise, I go to therapy. I do these things. Why am I, why is my body not cooperating? Yeah. Why am I exhausted? Why am I exhausted? Yeah. As long as we're busy doing, 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 we're not receiving. So the question I leave for the listeners today is where am I not receiving? And sometimes it is food. I was drinking bone broth. It's a way that I receive. And nourish. Um, where am I not receiving? Is it my body? Is it my breath? Am I breathing shallow? Is it sleep? Am I getting enough rest? Is it love? Is it physical touch? Is it support? Is it sisterhood? And and really asking yourself for the listeners, like what what do I need right now? How do I need to be nourished? It's not just food. It's not just support. It could be so many different things. What would you say to the woman right now who's feeling depleted? What is that first small step? Because we know, you and I know that small steps create a big impact. And so for some people listening, this conversation is new. Mm -hmm. It's a stretch. It's a growth edge. But we've sparked curiosity. So what would be the, a, a small thing someone could do? Hmm. Well, I would say, you know, as, as you were talking, I was, I was thinking, you know, sometimes we, before we can receive, we have to ask ourselves, what's the fear? What's the fear? 
And then what does that fear trigger in me? Or what is that fear? Like, how do I feel that fear? What's, what's the emotion that, that fear, the reaction to that fear. Um, and then to, that might need to be the first step before taking a few minutes to breathe. Uh, nature is always the easiest way to connect with source. There's a reason we were gifted with mother earth. She is our ultimate mother, you know, in so many ways that nature is the easiest way, but maybe we're it's 10 AM and we're in our office and we've got seven more hours of work to go. What do we do in that moment? You know, breathe, drink some, drink some tea or something that just makes us go, ah, oh. or, you know, for home, hug our, hug a pet or whatever. But I think it's really to identify for us how we receive, just as you were saying, like, is it through love? Is it through food, whatever, you know, how is it that we receive what prevents us, what fear prevents us from receiving and then saying, okay, um, you know, I see you, I honor you and I want to receive like this today or just being mm -hmm. open, like, okay, universe, will you send me something, send me a sign. And maybe we receive a butterfly or a little, what are little group of quail going through the yard or, you know, a big heron flying over or something like nature also gives us signs or a phone call, the text we've been waiting for. We find $10 on the ground. Again, infinite possibility for the ways that we can receive, but we also know deep down intuitively where we most need to receive. And mm -hmm. so I think I, with that, I would just like, I hope that everyone who is listening to this is receiving our love for them as women and as men or whoever is listening right now, that they know that they're not alone ever. Sometimes as a mom, we want to be alone. Like, I'm just going to shut the door in the bathroom and get away for a few minutes, but shave right, my legs. Right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, but, but that there, there is always love for us mm. and to have faith and believe that it will appear and to find those snippets every day, mm -hmm. those little, again, the little receivings every day. Sure. Someone wants to give me a million dollars or a free trip to Paris. Yes, I will take it. That's wonderful. And how happy am I when I walk outside and I see the hawk or, you know, right before I got in this call, the little, the little quail who were going running across my backyard. So to be open to receiving in those ways too. And to watch how things shift. Now, it doesn't mean that you can just let your health go. Because I do believe that we have to honor this miracle of a physical body we've been given. And we also get to honor the miracle of who we are inside as spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to make sure that we honor our spirits as well as our physical self. Right. Because we're not just physical. Yeah. Even though it is. So I want to take a moment. I think we can go for about, I just, I, I, I can't leave this show today without you talking a little bit about the divine needle blueprint. And I think this is the yeah. perfect opening into this. Share with us a little bit about how that helps you to serve your clients. Cause I'm, I'm guessing that they come to you because it's already, it's, to the physical level. So when I, when I teach, you know, energy healing inside my five element wealth, we talk about, you know, the astral body, the emotional, the, like there's these different layers of energy bodies. And by the time an imprinting gets to the physical, it's at, it's at a very deep level. It's manifested mm -hmm. physically. So normally that's when someone would come to someone like you is because now they're aware of it because now they're uncomfortable. So how does this divine needle blueprint how do you use this to help 
to develop a deeper understanding of maybe the patterns that someone's been living in that have created um, physical discomfort, dis-ease, um, ailments in any way? How do you integrate those together? Yeah, great question. You know, it's funny, a lot of people come to me just expecting that they have to live with their physical complaints or they're just really tired. So they kind of want to bypass that and go, well, what's my purpose? How can I, who's my, where's my soulmate? You know, why am I here? <laughs> what's happening. And, you know, it's, 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 it's really interesting how, and I'll go, tell me about your gut. And they go, Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do we have to talk about that? But yeah. So the, so the, our divine natal blueprint, our horoscope is, uh, you know, you can like our astrological chart, whatever, um, whatever you want to call it again, it, it offers us so many clues and there are personal planets so sun, moon, Venus, Mercury, Mars tend to be more personal planets, consider the personal planets. And then we've got the more outer planets, which are generational. So something for like Jupiter, which is 13 months, Saturn, two and a half years, they make these bigger cycles. The further out you go away from the earth, the bigger the cycle they make, you know, Chiron is a 50 year cycle. And I, you know, I got, I, I could share some stories about my Chiron return last year. Um, it was a doozy and, uh, <laughs> but it also, four more years. <laughs> that's right. But it also was part of what led me on this particular path. Um, and so we can look at the planets and what sign they're in, which is how they express themselves, what house they're in, which is what area of our lives they tend to express themselves in. Um, the elements. So every sign we have four elements, fire, air, earth, water. So sometimes if someone has a lot of fire that can impact them, um, through something like ADHD or feeling, you know, like they've got a lot of fire, they can get like, really, they, they like, they peak and then they crash and then they peak and then they crash. Someone has a lot of water like me, getting stuck in the emotions, a lot of murkiness, not knowing really how to start something, how to get to the other side of the lake. Um, then there are, you know, the nodes and the purpose. So there are these different aspects of, of how these things, how these different aspects of our chart affect us. Like for you, I'd be so curious to see your fifth house because I'm going, okay, something with your daughter, your child. Or your Venus, where is Venus? What are, how is she aspecting what's happening there? And I know we talked like there, so there, it gives us some clues around where we might have extra strengths, where we might have extra challenges, which again, where we have those challenges can so often translate into our superpower because like water emotion translates into intuition mm. often. And then looking at um, I've created something called a, the metaphysical rose. And so it's really looking at these eight aspects of our lives, financial, spiritual, physical, emotional, et cetera, relationships, um, and what houses and signs and planets correspond to those different areas of our lives. And then what aspects of natural medicine, certain herbs, et cetera, can we use to strengthen or support like someone with a lot of Capricorn energy is so often served by nutritional mushrooms, lion's mane, turkey tail, reishi, shiitake, et cetera, because that's Capricorn is, is that under underground energy. So I always think of, you know, fantastic fungi and the mycelium that are underground connecting. So the, the divine natal blueprint really gives us a clue as to what I don't, I want to say like the why, because the why is multifold as well. Why is this happening to me? But it can at least show us, okay, this is where you might be prone to experience vocal issues and, or thyroid or womb issues or, you know, blood issues immune. And this is how we can support you from both a spiritual perspective, as well as the physical perspective. Because it really healing is multifold. It really is. And, mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean you have to, like I said, give up your favorite dark chocolate. You may have to 
but you may find that as you're healing these things, you don't need the dark chocolate anymore to satisfy whatever it's satisfying. So it's fun to, it's mm-hmm. fun to see those things as well. And, and again, there's not, I, I'm not rigid about it. I don't believe in a, personally, I don't believe in a one size fits all diet or one size fits all anything. I, you know, everyone should drink celery juice. Well, that's just not the path that I follow. It's great if you want to follow that path, but I think that yeah. we have, we all have, no one's chart is the same. The closest charts I've ever seen are two twins who were born via C-section within two minutes of each other. But generally everyone has different, you know, vaginal twins always have different charts because of the timing, you know, they're usually about a half an hour apart to an hour apart. So their, their charts are a little bit different, but for the most part, how we, that chart expresses is as individual as the billions of people who are on our planet right now. Hmm. Yes. And it's, you know, it's your energetic imprint. It's the energetic imprint of the time and place that you were born and how you resonated with that in which you chose to come into this life with. And so for the person who is feeling, and and I know these people right now who, who are feeling like I've, I'm doing all the things. Why am I in pain? Why? And, and some of you listening, you know, that there, there's another layer of of emotional release to do from a divorce or, you know, I mean, we carry such heavy things as humans and we don't have to, we can in this life, allow them to be expressed and transmuted. And when we do that, we break that cycle. We don't pass it down to the next generation, or if they get little, sort of resonances from it, they get to heal it in a, in a different way, but it's not your way. They, you know, it's, and, and this is stuff that people aren't talking about enough. And what you bring to it is the balance of the awareness and the experience of, of Western medicine and training, and also the nourishment and support of, you know, how can we resource this uh, with ner- herbs and nutrition, which is so important. Like when I do my retreats, I mean, I always just like, I'm, I'm ravaging hungry because I'm doing a lot of energy work, <laughs> right? Like I, I'm like, and, and I know that there are certain foods that ground you and eating grounding foods is just super important. And when I've worked with people, I'm always just reminding people like you, you don't want to have this huge cathartic emotional release and like probably not eat for like three days. I mean, maybe every once in a while somebody needs that, but it's just like, if you're really having this big release, make sure you're supporting and nourishing on a different level so that we don't send you into, you know, a a huge kind of breakdown. And that's what Western only is missing. And that's what, and on the other hand, that's what super, you know, energy only based spiritual healing is missing. And I've been in both and I've seen both. So to bridge those together, because it is the soul and the body, everything I say, body and soul wisdom, embodied <laughs> soul, right? Like we're, we're embodied right. soul frequencies. Yes. That's how we bridge the two together. So yeah. uh, super awesome. Um, one last question is, do you use these fam or these divine needle blueprints like, do you, do you combine those for family mapping? I, so not as a practice, it hasn't come up. I do couples, I do work with couples and see how their charts interact with each other. And Again, it it goes back to, we, we haven't talked, we were talking about it before the podcast, this idea of becoming a little bit too dependent on the tool. A hundred percent. So it's, so I'm in a place of non-attachment to the tool and yeah. I, but it's good. It's, it's important to speak to that. It's not the keto diet. <laughs> it's not the lion's mane. It's not the bone broth. It's not the energy healer. It's not your coach. It's gathering and discerning what works for you. Right. So what, 
I think I would say we can, I can always look at these things for people, right? Always. Hey, what, what's happening here? Sure. Let's go take a look at that. I think my end goal is to empower people to be sovereign in themselves. So no matter what the family history dynamic trauma is, because we're all born with it. It's, I wrote a paper on um, mercury as a medicine in America. And if you look at some of the health crises we're having right now, mercury exposure is cumulative. It's passed down from mother to mother, because unless we're actively detoxing it out of our systems through something like zeolite or another healthy pathway, it's going to stay in us and it's going to pass from uterus to placenta to baby. So part of our generation as women, I truly feel is to, no matter where we are, anyone alive right now is here to break the generational curses, the generational trauma. So I want to make, I don't want to be looking too far behind us Mm -hmm. or too far in the future, but really focusing on present right now. Okay. You have these dynamics in your family. How do we empower you to be sovereign, especially when relationships are what I call parasitic? Because if, if we have a gut parasite, which 99% of us do, likely we've got people parasites or situational parasites around us too, or family ghosts, or, you know, And especially when there are really significant mental health issues like schizophrenia and bipolar, I'm always looking to see, all right, who else is in the room with us right now? (laughs) It's so often not just our soul that's struggling. There, There may be other attachments. And I know that might be a little bit too woo for some of your listeners, and that's okay. I just ask you to chuckle about that or take it with and take it with a grain of salt. But to know that like, really it's, really part of our goal. I I feel that for us as humans, all of our purpose is the same and that's to embody love. That's to recognize that we live on that paradise is on earth already. And to stay in present moment as much as we can, doesn't mean you can't plan for the future or strategize for the future or, you know, plant seeds for the future. And it doesn't mean that we can't heal the past, heal our wounds go, oh, wow, I really took on victim mentality there in that situation. And I, I need to do some forgiveness work to let that go. Yes, please. And how are you always embodying you? Hmm. So that ultimately what that family dynamic might look like, you are resilient to it. We become mm-hmm. resilient to it. Then we can either just let it go or we can say, I honor that. And that's mm-hmm. not me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, I think if I say anything else, we'll probably stay on for another hour. <laughs> so we are going to have you back on the show. And what I'm thinking is that we do a live screen share yeah. of what this divine natal blueprint looks like. I did that when I did soul contract work and it's just such a great tool to um to help people understand. Again, it's a tool that maybe you gather something and you're like, oh yeah, of course, that's what happened during this time. Or yes, that's why I always think this or this pattern keeps showing up. It just helps you develop a greater awareness and understanding, which is really where the shift begins, because then you enter everything from a place of curiosity versus a place of like trying to control or resist. And it's such a different energy. Yeah. And I'd love to offer if some, any of your listeners want to hop on a call right now, like not right now, obviously, but like who, who are curious to learn more, I'm happy to offer 20 minute complimentary discovery calls. So we can say, okay, what is going on with you? And how can I, you know, am I the right person to support you? Or do you actually need support or, you know, what's happening? Mm-hmm. What does this look we'll like for you? We'll drop that link in the show notes for people yeah. to get a hold of you and, yeah. and also your website and your social so that if, you know, someone's really resonating with, I've tried everything and I really, 
I'm looking for something new and I'm willing to, you know, receive and yeah, yeah. allow this shift to happen because I'm ready for this next level expansion. We'll certainly include those links in the show notes for people to find you. Jennifer, thank you, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm super grateful for your wisdom and your knowledge and your experience and just had a, an amazing time having a conversation. And like, we could so easily go for another hour, but I know that an hour already is quite long for so many people. Um, so yes, we'll include all of that. And thank you so much for being, is there anything else that you'd like to leave the listeners with? No, I just want to say thank you so much. And, you know, it's an honor for me to be here with you today. And the time did just fly by. And for anyone who's listening and really struggling, just like I said, know that you are loved and that you are here on this planet for a reason. You chose to be here right now for a reason because you have gifts that only you can bring to the world. And I can't wait to see how that evolves for you in the coming years and how that, how, and let us know, let Jen and I know like, Hey, I listened to this podcast and Oh my gosh, then this shifted and it was like magical. So know that you, you are here for a reason and we are all here in community supporting you, whether you feel it or not. Yeah. I want to just kind of, you know, double back on, on what you said, like so many people send me messages and, and just say that they experience such a shift just from listening to the podcast. And I, I feel that when you use your voice to then give back and say, Hey, this really shifted for me, then you're fully owning and stepping into the co-creation. So I just wanted to plant that seed because energetically, like I have really felt that experience of, we don't even, even if we're not working side by side, somehow that enters us into a relationship of co-creation. So if anything landed mm-hmm. for you, please do. You are welcome to send a message to either myself, Jennifer one or Jennifer two, no, <laughs> to either one of us and just let us know. Cause it really does. When you take that aligned action, it says like you're taking ownership of of your growth and your experience and it continues to expand even more and you know it can look so many different ways so thank you again for for being here and thank you to my listeners aloha everyone have a wonderful day thank you